Hey YouTube, welcome to Higher Math Solutions. This video tutorial is going to go over how to evaluate trig functions using the unit circle. I do have another video that goes over how to recreate the unit circle, and you want to use that if you ever have a quiz or a test where you need to write out the entire circle. If you just want to evaluate trig functions quickly, you do not want to have to recreate the entire circle, but instead you want to use right triangles. First, we can start off with the x and y plane. At this axis right here, this is zero degrees or zero radians. Up here, we are at pi over two or 90 degrees. Here we are at pi or 180 degrees. And here we are at three pi over two and 270 degrees. The unit circle is a circle with a radius of one. So if I'm at zero degrees, I plot a point right here and with a radius of 1, this is the point 1, 0. Up here, this is the point 0, 1. At pi, this is the point negative 1, 0. And at 3 pi over 2, I'm at the point 0, negative 1. And when you're evaluating trig functions, your cosine is your x, your sine is your y, and your tangent is y over x, otherwise known as slope. Another part of the unit circle is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if I have a 30 degree angle here, this is also known as my pi over sixes. The unit circle is a radius of one, so I'll put one right there, and then you can use your 30, 60, 90 rules to recreate the rest of the triangle. The short leg is half of the radius, so that will be one half. And the long leg is the short leg multiplied by square root of 3. So that will end up being square root of 3 over 2. Again, my cosine will be my x value, my sine will be my y value, and then my tangent will be my y over x. Another triangle in the unit circle is a 60, 30, 90. So here we have a reference angle of 60 degrees. These are your pi's over 3's. My unit is still 1 for the hypotenuse. Again, my short leg, which is now down here, because my short leg is across from the 30, is half of the hypotenuse. And then your long leg, which is across from the 60, is your short leg times square root of 3. You can see it's just like the 30 degree triangle, but your x and your y are flipped. The last triangle in the unit circle is your 45, 45, 90. This is an isosceles triangle, and these are your pi's over 4's. I'll still use a unit of 1 for my hypotenuse, but then your short leg and your long leg, which actually are the exact same size, will be the square root of 2 over 2's. Again, cosine is your x, sine is your y, and you can see they're the exact same number for your 45's. So let's just do some practice problems, and I will show you how to recreate your triangles. Let's say that you're doing a problem and you need to evaluate sine of 3 pi over 2. First, you need to know where 3 pi over 2 is located on the unit circle. This is in radians, and 3 pi over 2 is one of my x or y axes, and I know that it's located right down here. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is my y value in the point. I also remember that this is the point 0, negative 1. So I know that my sine of 3 pi over 2 is going to be the y-coordinate of that point. So my answer is negative 1. I can also try tangent of pi. Pi is also one of my xy points. Pi is over here. And this is the point negative 1, 0. Now this is cosine and this is sine, so you cannot see tangent from the point. But to get tangent, you can just do y over x. So if I do 0 over negative 1, I will end up with 0. So 0 will be my answer. Another thing to know about tangent is tangent is your slope. So if I'm looking at a horizontal line, the slope of a horizontal line is 0. So tangent of any horizontal line will be 0. 
Another example is if I want to do cosine of 5 pi over 6. So when I look at this one, this is not one of my x and y points. I recognize this as a pi over 6, and so I need to remember that a pi over 6 is one of my 30 degree triangles. So you can just recreate the 30 degree triangle. This is 1, this is the short side right here, which is 1 half, and this side is this side times square root of 3. Cosine is my x value, which is down here. So I know that my answer is square root of 3 over 2 because it's this value. The only thing that you need to also include in this is the sine. You need to know which quadrant 5 pi over 6 is in. A way that I remember is that I look at my numerator and I see that is 1 less than my denominator. If your number is 1 less than the denominator, that means you're in the second quadrant. And cosine is your x value and x numbers are negative in the second quadrant, so I need to add in a negative. Another example is if I want to do cosecant of 5 pi over 3. Again, this is a pi over 3, and so that is my 60 degree triangle. So I will recreate the 60 degree triangle Again, it's a unit of one, but now my short leg is down here on the x value, and then my long leg is on my y value. This one's a little bit trickier because this is a reciprocal trig function. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that means I need to take my y value and I need to turn it over. So sine of pi over three is square root of three over two, Cosecant of pi over 3 is 2 over square root of 3. I also need to determine what sign goes in front. 5 pi over 3, if you know your degrees and your radians, you will know that that is in the fourth quadrant. And y values in the fourth quadrant are negative. Now another thing that you're going to have to do to this number, this is an answer that uh, you can't make final, but if you need to rationalize it, you need to go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3 for rationalizing. So you will get negative 2 square root of 3 over 3 to get that square root out of the denominator. So if you're ever evaluating trig functions, do not recreate the whole unit circle. Just recreate the triangles, and it will make it a lot faster of a process. Thank you for watching Higher Math Solutions, and see you next time.